Welcome back, y'all. So the past couple of years, we've had an issue with artists who believe they're above criticism. Not only that, but their sentiment usually bleeds into their fan bases, which has led to music critics and alike being ganged up on, dislike bombed, and losing the passion to review music. The first two are me. It's me. Well, I think it's time we address the situation and a couple of other similar topics because this is getting out of hand. So we're going to go point by point and open up a dialogue in the comments just to see what everyone's thinking. But we're also going to keep it respectful, people. Some of y'all don't know how to to have a conversation as adults you can disagree without insulting someone if you can't that means you don't really have a point let's get into it. point one artists are depending on influencers to push their albums instead of making quality albums the rise of streaming has led us into an era that some of us have coined microwave music or fast food music it is to be consumed mindlessly quickly and doesn't provide any prolonged sustenance it is all about racking up the streams and making a 25 song incohesive jumbled up album just trying to get one single to pop off and become a TikTok or a radio hit, usually both. A tool record labels and artists have begun to use are influencers, specifically the fan bases of streamers nowadays. If an artist really wants the music to do well, it would behoove them to befriend a streamer, appear on said stream, and then after that, you just watch the money rolling. On top of that, the streamer also now has incentive to withhold their real opinions because now y'all are friends. You're not gonna take money out your friend's pockets, right? Let's see exactly what Kai Sinat had to say about this. Look, I think I'll start losing myself if I start taking money and obviously a label going want to sit to want you to say it's nice as fuck yes it's cool like it's good it's, it's nice as fuck but then then i'm not being real with y'all and the way you can know i'm not being real with y'all neither chat is if the shit clearly ass and then i'm saying it's nice during the same stream kai also discovered something else so i'm going to show the clip out of context and i want y'all to guess why this happened I ain't. Hola. Okay, what's her at? Bro, Glow, please. <gasps> I was wondering why I don't see Glow. What's her shit? No way. Glow. Glow, there's no way you blocked me, bro. See. Don't come on my lab ask me about nobody that I done blocked. Fuck you talking about. They blocked and they gonna stay there. You made your bed, you gotta lay her, nigga. You see, this is the flip side to that equation. What if the streamers react earnestly and your song is trash? Uh, hit it. Left foot now, y'all. Move to the left. Right foot, left foot. Now hop one time. No, 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 no. Come on, glow, 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 glow. No! I love glow, bro. Kai on stream listened to Glorilla's song and he wasn't wasn't feeling it. Is that a crime? But when he expressed his thoughts, she blocked him on all socials. Before that, they appeared to be friends. But like I said, this is all part of that play. Because now if you're not gonna say my music is good, you're of no use to me. Not only that, she basically threatened his life. What babe? You made so bad you got later. Now look she told me come down I would be throwing some flimmers at you nigga. Those are flimmers you finna throw. I come visit jails. I stab niggas. <laughs> niggas but thank God her and her friends were too dumb to realize he was in a fake jail. And at the end of the day, Kai won that. Would have been better if he stuck the landing on the phrase. I'm drunk as fuck, I might go around and unblock Kai. Damn! Damn. 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 You might have a shot to oh. Oh. Wait, wait, hold on, let me talk, let me talk. That ass, That's let me talk. Big GL. Hold on, Glorilla. Oh shit. You laid your bed, you better stay there! Oh. Still 1-0 Kai. This goes into a later point that I have, but Glorilla thought she was bigger than Kai Sinat. She thought she had more juice than Kai Sinat. Maybe y'all are thinking this is a one-time thing. Maybe y'all thinking this is only recently happening, but this has been going on for a while. Y'all remember Shiggy? He used to dance to songs and shit. Most famously, he danced to Drake's In My Feelings. <laughs> He would dance to different songs, and when he did, they would go viral. He got invited to Good Morning America. He was dancing in a couple of NBA games on top of the world, but he made one mistake. He, as well, got too close. He thought they were actually friends, and those artists saw him as an equal. Until one day, he's backstage at a show, and Fabulous and Casanova two times show up and want to ask him a couple of questions. Okay, okay. I need you to do you a wanna challenge. That? You want to do that to Drake? I said, yo, I need you a challenge. You want to do that to Whoa. Drake? Whoa. Uh, you want to do that to Drake? Wait, who? who? Uh, uh, I'm not gonna do that to Drake. Who? 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 Who
shot. You were, I, I shot a you out on a shootout three, right? Yeah, you punch it. You punch it to yeah. wow. So how you gonna make that up? <laughs> what you gonna do to make that up? We on Fab Live now. They want him to promote their music, but they don't want to pay him. They basically allude to them shouting them out in a song and his payment for doing a dance as equal, like they're worth the same. And because of that, you owe them this favor. Here's how I see it. Shiggy had to become Shiggy for you to shout him out. Also, you did that of your own volition. So now you're asking him and he's telling you his price. There's nothing wrong with that. Someone call Ray J. So when I seen him, I was with Floyd and 50 and he tried to say, don't touch me. And I touched that nigga. I'm sure they're cool now, but it just goes to show even in 2018, the power of influencers was there. For this one, I kind of have my own recommendation. People need to stop getting buddy-buddy with each other. If you're a fan, you can't be friends because people are always going to assume that you're promoting that music because y'all are cool anyway. So I just say, don't even have the hassle. Don't even do it. But if you do take money to promote, just put a disclaimer in the video. That way we know it's not a review. It's more of a listening party, which leads me here. In defense of music reviewers and critics, I myself am a music reviewer. I'm a normal guy that listens to music in a normal way. I listen while I work out, drive to work while cleaning like a regular person. When I speak about the music, I tend to use layman terms. Unless I want to get fancy and go track by track, then I'll fuck it up like that. I also tend to listen to people I'm already listening to, as in I'm already a fan. Now, a critic, Fantano specifically, has a very difficult job. They have to be objective about a large swath of music across many different genres. They listen to music like a wine connoisseur. They swish the wine around in the glass, smell the content talk about the qualities and take a tiny aromatic sip. I'm more of a frenzy of box wine guy and I'm drinking to get drunk. We're consuming in very different ways but where we're similar is we're not giving out ratings out of malice. If I say a song wasn't good that doesn't mean I hated it. If I say an album was bad that doesn't mean I hate the artist and everything they've ever done. It just means that I listened to the album and it simply was not good in my opinion. You're welcome to yours too and I'm also not a fucking stan. In 2001 Eminem dropped the song following a man who is his self-proclaimed biggest fan. It started with the letter, then intensifies after M does not respond. The fan wanted to feel validated and seen, and as such, things eventually go off the rails. This song highlights the danger of fans' love turning into an obsession. An obsession, people. The name of that song is Stan. It is not good to be a Stan. Stans are the type to murder the artist because of the unrequited love that they hold. Selena and John Lennon's death were both, unfortunately, results of stan culture. It's also the premise of an anime movie called Perfect Blue. I would check it out. But back to it. I get it. You love the artist. But sometimes you need to take a step back and realize you're speaking about a person who has never clothed you, never fed you, and couldn't pick you out of a lineup. They are not speaking directly to you in their music. You can relate and be grateful for the music without erecting a statue in their honor in your fucking living room. When I reviewed Pete Friday 2, all the barbs came out to attack me, and only a couple of them had valid points, which I said to them. But for the most part, the overwhelming argument was, I hated Nikki, I was a hater, or I secretly loved Nikki and hated her which makes no sense. I love Nikki. I've been a fan since 2009, but the argument that they're making only works if I hate Nikki, and therefore they have to put me in that box because they're not there to listen to an album review. They're there to defend their queen. That was a good time to talk about confirmation bias. When people look up album reviews, they're very rarely looking for an actual opinion. Most of the time, they're looking to confirm what they already thought. The thought that their favorite artist only releases fire. Listen, he lost me on 8 a.m. in Charlotte when he started talking about uh, 21, wherever you go, I go, we Yugoslavian. That for me is unacceptable. <laughs> there was some bad. Was I get it. I don't care about this shit though, dude. It's like, did it ever occur to you, bro, after a certain point of listening to you talk that niggas don't know what the fuck you talking about and don't care about these random ass fodder niggas that you keep mentioning in your raps? I remember fighting over Monica with Jason. I remember on the Who the fuck is Jason? And that's not realistic. Humans are incapable of perfection, and that's okay. I promise you, your favorite artist does not want to live up to your idea of perfection every single day. Not only that, but it's incredibly disingenuous. Stans put all of their artists' albums on the same level. They're all good. They're all perfect. They don't make mistakes. In reality, I would bet my money, all of it, that your favorite artist would love if you loved their favorite song. I know that may sound weird, but yes, your favorites have songs that they do and don't like in their own work. And it's probably one of the most obscure tracks on the album. Even they don't think everything that they create is top tier. Well, most of them don't. My last point being... <laughs> Because labels have started signing people who are popular and not talented, as told by Nicki Minaj here. Labels do not 
care about talent anymore. It's about your popularity. So the music industry has changed drastically because of that. So when I was growing up, I would put on the radio and hear talented people. When you guys put on the radio now, you hear popular people. We have many artists being built upon a house of cards. These labels see a small spark and go, oh, we can build on this. Let's give them a shitty contract, wave a million dollars in their face, and for lack of a better term, pimp them out. During their tenure, they are told yes to almost everything because all the money that they're getting is a loan. It's the first time they've seen this type of money. They probably just became the head of household. Lots of changes to deal with. So in their head, they're the king or queen of the world because all this is working out. And if you use this to catapult your career, more power to you. But if you get up on this, like I said, house of cards, and you think you just king shit now. Then let me tell you about the inevitable. One day, you'll stop making that type of money. You'll have to depend on all the relationships that you burn with your peers and fans because you haven't built a good foundation. You don't have people that truly wanted to work with you. You have label mates that were forced to work with you. You have producers that hated working with you. And I'll just be watching from a distance with my Shinigami eyes counting down the last few seconds of your career but hey do you man you know do you think i have a message for all the other artists who don't have their own heads up their ass not that anyone will ever see this but i would like y'all to remember that people love you for various reasons some of you are people's childhoods maybe someone's song that they played at their wedding songs that healed them from a heartbreak you did all that and you matter but you're not infallible which again say it with me is okay because you are more than your latest album release and first week sales and as a matter of fact i'll be starting a series pretty soon going over for the reasons that I love, the artists that I love. It'll be coming out sometime next year. Be on the lookout for it. But in the meantime, y'all be safe. Y'all be nice to each other. And I hope y'all have a wonderful year.